Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 40th reunion, reunion of class of 1984. On behalf of Professor S. Ganesh, Director IIT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you present here today at the 40th reunion of class of 1984. This is a very momentous occasion, as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantesh Palani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. J.P. Sinha, Batch Coordinator of 1984, to kindly take his seat on the stage. I now humbly request Mr. Ajay Trivedi, batch representative, to kindly join us on the dais. I now humbly request Mr. Bhagwan Shankar, batch representative, to kindly join us on the dais. I would now like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Ganesh Director I.D. Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhan Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyot has been observed. The lighting of lamps symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now observe one minute silence in remembrance of classmates from 1984 who have left for heavenly abode. I would request Mr. J.P. Sinha to kindly come forward to pay tribute to their batchmates and address the gathering. Uh, dear friends, as we know, we lost uh, Mukul Rajan and Vinit Pankhya in the last couple of years. So I think uh, we must observe one minute silence to pay tribute to our dear friends. Thank you. I would now, re requesting Mr. Ajay Trivadi to please come up on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about count counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IID Kanpur. Despite the years that have passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. Yes? No? Yes. So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? Let's make this 40th reunion memorable. So what I would request you to clap with me three times and shout 40 as loud as you can. Uh, we have to count, we have to clap three times, okay? And then shout 40 as loud as we can. Okay. Better. Thank you. So
So let me take you through a short trip down the memory lane. 45 years ago, more than 300 young boys and seven girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Chai athanni ki thi, samosa barane ka. Capstan ka pack, ek rupay ka. Or old monk, pachas rupay ki. Tuition fees, do so rupay ki thi. Hostels rent, so rupay ka. Or mahine ka mess bill, ek so pachas rupay ka. Gate se hall 2 tak, char speed breakers hote the. IIT bus and Ganesh ji ka tempo were mostly used means of transport. It was in an era of Amitabh Bachchan, Dharmendra, Rekha, and Hema Malli. Famous villains were Ajit Khan, Prem Chopra, and Vamp was definitely Helen. <laughs> Jungli and Silsila were Bollywood blockbusters, and the most famous song that demanded maximum number of repeats was Monica. Oh, my darling. <laughs> Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction. And the most common phrase used during movie time was? Audio. And? Focus. Empty ki chai was always special and most of you could be found in Red Rose or ordering Shashi Canteen ka? Hakka chow. Major attractions in the city were Chungfa, Futu and Yog. Famous jargons of the other point were Fatru, Fudda, Siud, Fanda Gol, Chab Diya, Max Kar Diya, Tel Ho Gaya. <laughs> Tiwari Paan Ka Chalu Khata Almost Sab Ka Tha Or Sundar Lal Puttan Lal Ka Pata Almost Sab Ko Rehta Tha. Sundar Lal Puttan Lal Bole To Dho Bees Who Would Bring, Who Would Provide Overnight Service. Talash rehti thi Shishupal ji ki as he would do odd jobs at student gym khana aur intezaar rehta tha Shiv Charan ji ka. Shiv Charan ji bole to mail messenger who would bring admission letters, scholarship letters, appointment letters including shadi ke proposal letters with girls or boys photographs inside that. The brawl between hall 2 and hall 3 had always been famous for various reasons. Battle of supremacy would range right from competing during the cultural fests to sports to stealing of fuses to mass shouting from rooftop during blackouts to gali competition. It only reminds me of famous quote by Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji, Kaurav kaun, kaun pandav, tedha sawal hai, dono or fela, shakuni ka kut, jal hai. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an honored batch to see famous personalities like Jagjit Singh, Chitra Singh, Gulam Ali, Hemant Kumar to visit the campus during their stay. A studious batch to remember the electrifying lectures of Professor M. M. Oberoi, Professor Sahasrabuddhe, Professor Parasnes, Professor Malik, Professor Dhande, Professor Arun Biswas, and Professor Usha Kumar. An energetic batch to see Asia Games and witness India winning its first World Cup in cricket in 1983 under the captaincy of Kapil Dev. A dynamic batch who ran the mess by themselves during the mess workers' strike and did makeshift arrangements at airstrip when Pandal fell in Cultural Fest of 1980 due to heavy rains and power shutdown at Panki. A competitive batch with a substantial number of fellow batchmates who successfully cleared civil services and made noteworthy contributions to the governance of the country. And last but not least, a blessed batch. As 3 girls chose their life partner here. I can't personally share all your... 
I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of class of 1984 whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Pidli. Japs. So you should raise your hand. <laughs> Loki. Shanti. Lambu. Oily, Akhtar Ali. See, I know more than you. <laughs> Charlie. Correct. This is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1984. I hope I got my facts right. On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about at our next reunion. We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person, something we cannot take for granted anymore. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. Yeah, very, very good morning to all of you. and. Uh, and a warm welcome to IIT Kanpur. I'll say welcome back uh, to all the uh, the batch, uh, the entire batch, and also the family. Uh, it's wonderful having you here, and uh, we are extremely delighted that, if not all, majority of you could, you know, plan a visit and be with us uh, for this reunion. And uh, it's always a pleasure uh, hosting our uh, honorable alumni who have done exceedingly well you know, in, in whichever uh, career path that they have chosen. And we are extremely proud of all of you. And uh, I think that's one reason why IIT Kanpur has its name uh, within the country and outside. And we are very, very grateful to all of you for keeping the flag very high. Thank you. What um, I would do in the next 30 minutes or so is to just give an overview about the Institute as uh, it stands today. Uh, I'm sure, you know, in the 40 years, many things have changed. Many of you would have visited uh, the Institute, uh, you know, more than once in between, and I am sure one of you visits more often. <laughs> uh, yeah, right, yeah, and I meet him almost uh, once in two weeks, yeah? Yeah, it's nice. So, you know, he, he knows what exactly is happening, but including the one that happened yesterday. So, you know, for others, it may be something, a new information. So I thought that you would share as to where we are and uh, how the Institute is doing and what are some of the, you know, uh, you know, targets that you have set, the plans, and, and of course, the challenges that, that we face. And we would be very, very happy to have your input, feedback, and help in, in you know, even setting new goals and, and reaching there. Thank you. So there are many things that have remained the same. Uh, of course, the, uh, the campus, many of the old buildings are pretty much the same. But there's other thing that is the, the computational facility that the Institute has. You know, that's something that is something that we are very, very keen about. And we have, you know, constantly upgrade the computational facility we have now a supercomputer, what you call Param Sanghanak, which is you know, a high-end facility for the research that is housed here in the computer center. Of course, the other uh, you know, aspect about the campus is the, the green cover. And I'm sure all of you would have noticed, despite the campus is getting in new buildings, you would see that there are more trees on campus than what it was maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years back. You know, that is something we are extremely uh, conscious about that we increase the green cover and though we increase the footprint. <clears throat> so there are other, uh, uh, just the statistics, like currently we have uh, 500, about 580 faculty members. Uh, and that's a substantial number as compared to what it was uh, when you were here students. And, and our 
UG PG students ratio is almost equal now. This four thousand, it's about four thousand six hundred or so. So we are touching, or soon would touch about ten thousand students on campus. Uh, we have about one seventy to two hundred postdocs, and and the alumni base probably is more than forty three thousand. So that's that's the you know summary about the institute. There are many new departments uh, that have come in in the recent years, and there are many that are added after you have graduated from here. But the ones that are shown in the red color font are the ones that are added in the last three, four years. One, of course, in the engineering discipline, we have sustainable energy engineering and design. In sciences, we have added cognitive science department and space, planetary, astronomical sciences and engineering, which we, uh, you know, is summarized as space department and and. In humanities, the economics division has moved in, moved out of it, and then we have a new department, economic sciences. Uh, when I say new, it's about uh, you know seven, eight, nine years old department. Then we have interdisciplinary programs which are which draws basically the faculty from the other departments, offer masters and PhD, which includes photonic sciences and engineering, material science and nuclear engineering and technology. So this is uh, the nuclear engineering technology is one of the Older programs that is there for a long time. So uh, one of the new uh, initiatives that the institute has taken is, is to offer what you call as an online master's degree, which you call as an e-master's program. This is mainly targeted towards working professionals. So we have, uh, you know, really took feedback from the industry as to what is the, you know, the domain in which they would like to be upskilled, and these are about twelve plus programs that we offer. Uh, some of them are completely sponsored by the industry because you know the uh, industry sponsors them. Some of them, uh, those who are working in industry, pay for uh, the program and they get enrolled. And these are all online programs. They have the lectures in the evening hours or in the weekends. And then they do come for about a week or three, four days uh, kind of orientation and, and towards the end to have some group discussion and so on. But otherwise, it's completely online. And one could finish the program in one year if they take full load, but it all depends on their uh, you know, uh, plan, like how much time they have and how they wish to finish. They can slow pace it also, depending on their commitment, and take two years, three years to complete. So we leave it to the, the students to plan their own you know, curriculum and how many courses they wish to teach. It's extremely popular. We have already graduated one batch of students. We have currently about 600 students enrolled in these programs. The other aspect is, of course, the flexibility that, that we offer, uh, as you know, uh, in the undergraduate program of IIT Kanpur. Uh, we do have minor, double major, dual major. So what is uh, uh, you know, very uh, uh, important aspect about is that if you, if you do an undergraduate degree in one, in one, one, one <clears throat> department, you can spend one more year and get a master's from any other department that offers a master's. So this is you know, this kind of flexibility doesn't exist in any other IIT. So that is, uh, you know, is something that we are very, very happy about. It offers all flexibility that, that a student can think of, right? And as we know, we, we, we revamp our curriculum every 10 years. And recently we have looked at our curriculum, brought in many new changes that includes, for example, uh, new degree options, including honors and interdepartmental degree, they can sort of you know make their own program as to where they want to uh, uh, specialize in. And and then we have what is called a scheme, so they can take courses from social science, communication, humanities, and if they wish, they can have it. And then even if they are involved in in a startup or entrepreneurial activity, you know some part of it can be you know, considered as a credit for them to fulfill, you know, the credit requirements. So we do acknowledge their contribution there and their learning there. And then we do have now exit degree for students uh, who are not that good or, I mean, they wish to exit earlier than four years. Uh, we have what is called the BS degree that soon we would be, you know, taking up to the board. So this is approved. So certain credits, if they earn, they can exit with that. So that it, it allows students to exit if, they are not doing well and they don't enjoy it anymore. And of course, they can do online courses and then have some credits transferred uh, whenever there are exams and so on. Uh, 
that's about the program. Uh, you know, masters and PhD. Of course, there are new programs that we have offered from because of the new departments. I'll some of them I'll touch upon a little later. So when it comes to faculty uh, related, uh, you know, uh, data, you can see that uh, in the last two three years we have added significant number of faculty. This is the net, uh, you know, the total faculty number. There are many who retire as well. So they basically the number that you see is that is because of more young faculty that we are able to hire. So in in, in last uh, five years, you can see that we have offered about 300 offers and of which uh, 200 faculty have joined. So it's our success rate is about, you know, uh, 60 plus percent, which is pretty good because all those that we offer also get offered in many other places in India and also abroad. So therefore yeah. they do consider a majority of them ID Kanpur as their first choice to join. So many of our faculty colleagues have been recognized for their contributions, which includes Padma Shri and uh, Infosys Prize is another uh, you know, recognition that is put in place by Infosys Foundation. And, and, and you can see that there are five faculty members from the Institute who have been recognized for their contribution in, in research. And uh, two of them that are shown at the bottom, lawyer and Sachi and Tipati and Arun Shukla, they have received this um, award just last week. You know, this is for the year 2024, right? Uh, one in engineering, other one is uh, biological science. <clears throat> and of course, there are other recognitions like TWAS Fellowship. This is uh, the World Academy of Sciences. Uh, uh, you know, the recent one being Professor Agnes Shagarwal, and then Foreign Associate in U.S. National Academy again a big recognition, Professor Manindra Agarwal, and so on. So, you know the recognitions. You can see that there are many that are international recognitions. Many of our faculty have received some of them are in a very very prestigious like the the Gödel Prize and Fulkerson Prize. These are internationally you know considered to be uh, you know a very significant recognition for the contribution. So. This other one is the Shantishwarup Bhatnagar Award. This is given to, uh, given by the government of India for faculty who are under 45 years, uh, who are done exceedingly well. Again, we have a long list of faculty members who are done, who have been recognized for the contribution, which which really talks about uh, you know the uh, the how good the faculty have been in the institute, and one of the reasons why. Uh, you know, we could do well in science, engineering, research, and so on, is because of the ecosystem that we have. What we have is a, a fantastic research and innovation ecosystem, which includes, of course, academic department, interdisciplinary programs, but we have many thematic research center, which are uh, centers that draw faculty from different departments, but have a mission mode project in given theme that I'll, you know, some of them I'll just highlight in, in later. And of course, we have research facilities, which has you know equipments and other, which really help the students and faculty to carry out research. There are two other elements. That is, one is the incubator that we have. First, uh, Professor Sh Ankur Sharma is here, right? I don't know whether he gave a talk. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, and, and that is an incubator, uh, uh, which is, I would say, one of the best in the country uh, in terms of the achievements, in terms of the number of startups that we have, and the funding program that we have, we are able to identify and fund, you know, uh, uh, startups on campus. And then, of course, we have the techno park, which is a research park where the R and D, you know, the the industry can come and set up an, you know, R and D lab here. So that's we have a makeshift facility. The new building is almost ready. Next month, we will be moving into that huge facility as well. So this is, uh, you know, if you really look at ranking, we have fourth in the engineering in the country. But when it comes to you know, innovation, uh, we are number one uh, in the in the country. That's something that we are proud. And of course, uh, we certainly would like to be the number one in the country. And of course, there are many measures and one has to, it, it would take some time because still it is English. Uh, other IITs have grown in number in terms of the number of students and faculty. We have added significant number of young faculty now. So it would take a while for us to, you know, increase the output in terms of you know publications, patents, and grants, and so on. So these are some of the um, uh, technologies that are developed uh, on campus, which includes, for example, national block 
blockchain for e-governance. This is something, a, a big, big initiative I'll talk about in the next two slides. So where uh, our C3 Hype Center really helping even governments to you know have such facility. And then we have the anti-counterfeiting technology, which is again licensed to the companies. And, and I think the touch sensitive watch, is it outside? I don't know whether that's, that's one is displayed. And of course, the national air quality index that we get to know is sort of you know, developed here and housed and the facility for many of the cities being monitored from IIT Kanpur. Um, these are some of the um, other uh, IPR uh, or technology transfer. Some examples are shown here, but what I really would like to stress upon is that if you really look at the conversion rate, it's about 14% of our IPR uh, is, is transferred. It's significantly you know, a, a, a good number because if you look at the global average is about five, six percent, 14% uh, is really uh, you know, uh, a number that would really people would consider this is outstanding, right? Uh, one would expect that the, uh, the ratio increases, but that's something that we are working on, but that only talks about the potential and also the track record we have uh, in terms of converting the IPRs into commercialization. Uh, this is about the startup. I probably, it was already introduced to you. We have uh, close to 170 uh, startup companies uh, currently housed in our incubator and as many have graduated, there are about uh, 16 portfolios and uh, you know most of them are deep tech. Uh, we don't get into FinTech kind of a companies here. These are all, uh, uh, you know, a lot of R&D involved. You can see that NDUR is about the unmanned aerial vehicle. And then Offgrid is a company that came up with uh, new material-based um, uh, batteries for UV, uh, sorry, uh, EV vehicles. And then, of course, the, the full company is about vegan leather, you know, how you can convert the temple waste into various products. You know, that's what it is. These are some of the companies that are doing exceedingly well. For example, Offgrid has a huge investment from one of the big international company as well, and so is full. So these are some companies which, which are doing exceedingly well, just to give an example. And these are some of the achievements of the incubator in terms of you know, uh, uh, you know, know, how well the companies have done, including the Nocock Robotics is a company that uh, you know, uh, uh, you know is, is instrumental in making, or you know, from design to commercialization, you know, in, uh, in about 10 months, we are able to come up with what you call as the invasive ventilator during the COVID times. You know, this is now one of the top three ventilator making company in the in the country, and it is also exporting outside. So it's not only as good as the one that we import, but you know, it is about 40% of the cost that otherwise you would pay for any such you know equipment. So that's there's a book also as to how uh, this whole project was executed because this was done during the COVID period when even the supply chain was a big challenge. You know, so everything there was a big team that was working together to make this uh, you know ventilator possible because all these components that are present in this uh, uh, in the ventilator is sourced from within India. <clears throat> so we have centers which are. For example, uh, Nanoscience Center or National Center for Flexible Electronics. These are thematic R&D centers which take up, you know, uh, um, industry-relevant project or translational value. You can see here at the Center for Nanoscience, there are many that are developed which are uh, for the therapeutics or for um, diagnostics. And, you know, the, the company that listed there, e, e spin Nanotech is one company that was sort of a spin-off from this center, and that's the one that makes the, this uh, Swasa mask during uh, COVID, you know. So that is something the assembly line was set up here. The flexible electronics is again a huge uh, facility that is funded by the ministry, METI. Um, they have a variety of uh, infrastructure and expertise, and, uh, you, know, uh, I mean, you know, the main objective, uh, objective used to make uh, 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 circuits on flexible surfaces. You know, it could be cloth, it could be paper, and any other. It has a you know wide variety of application, including defense, health, and so on. So we have Center for Cybersecurity again, w one such center in the country where uh, you know uh, uh, the government really uh, reach out to us for many of the applications, including, for example, in the <coughs> cyber 
security and defense applications even stock uh, exchange and shipping yard and so on uh, it it certainly you know is one that it provides tools for protection of all our critical infrastructure um, and then offer security layer and also whenever you know someone try to hack or hack to control of their system we help them in in really getting rid of that kind of a, uh, you know a situation and protect uh, you know the infrastructure so uh, in two months back we inaugurated a center called san mehta family center for engineering and medicine uh, this center was funded by uh, the mehta family foundation mr rahul mehta uh, in us is not an alum but he is one who is promoting this kind of research activities and it has clear mandate in using engineering and technology as a tool to come up with you know uh, address I mean, medical uh, issues right you know so there are three verticals for example regenerative medicine molecular medicine and digital medicine there are many projects that have already taken up and there's a huge facility that has come up if you have time you could visit this is one of the uh, state of the art building which has come up with uh, within the campus <clears throat> So we also have facilities, for example, 5G test bed at IIT Kanpur, and along with um, IIT Madras, you know, uh, uh, researchers who are associated with this facility have helped really in making um, the 5G technology, which is licensed to Tejas Network. You know, this is a Tata Group now that's going to be the backbone for telecommunication in the country. um and a lot has been said about this facility and the technology that developed uh, we can see that even the prime minister mentioning about the contribution uh, in terms of how uh, the indigenous technology can really play a significant role in the telecommunication and it enabled devices and so on yeah this is something about the the prime minister mentioning about uh, you know the achievements of iit kanpur so we have uh, set up a new center this is called center for developing intelligent systems uh, basically uh, they look at uh, ai and ml applications in in developing tools that could address a variety of uh, you know uh, problems or come up with solutions so this is again uh, a center which is completely r and d uh, it doesn't currently offer any program but it is it takes up large projects for the government and many other industry yeah so we have a center of excellence for unmanned aerial vehicle again it is funded by the uh, government or well, part of it has come from the up government uh, because there is a huge market uh, uh, and 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 we do need technology and tools even including manpower for the unmanned uh, aerial vehicles we have a fantastic uh, Uh, expertise in that multiple uh, faculty members from different departments have been working on this uh, system whether it is the control system whether it is the autonomous like the computing power or for you know the the drone itself you know so that's a that's a package and uh, we are also offering an mtech program you can see that new mtech program on unmanned aerial systems you know it's being offered currently by the institute this is uh, you know is something that's a major contribution of the institute to the governance uh, of the country this is centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system what you call cpgram it's a portal wherein any citizen can go and lodge any of their grievances uh, uh, it's a ai engine uh, regardless in which language uh, they 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 you know lodge any complaint this engine can really understand and sort the complaint to appropriate sections you know it's it's it the number of hits that it handles in a in a day is you know is really humongous but it works without any intervention so that's the intelligence system that it has been developed and for its robustness and efficiency the government has uh, given uh, what is called as national award for e governance to iit kanpur uh, that's that's a photograph when professor shalab uh, from the institute received that award so there are other such large um, investment in terms of projects and 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 with a very clear mandate for helping the defense sector one is the drdo industry academy a center of excellence uh, uh it's about 200 crore project uh, that is being sanctioned and we are having a dedicated facility the space has been allotted soon there would be huge facility coming up and several targeted projects have already been identified they're all 
developed in partnership with the DRDO labs. Uh, there are five different verticals. You can see that this center is mainly focused on materials. That's the strength uh, of you know faculty who are associated with that. So that you can see whether it is flexible electronics, nanomaterials, material for design and development, and so on. So the material is the focus. And Professor Kantes Balani is one of the faculty members involved in that. We'll be able to tell more about uh, this particular vertical. So I mentioned about the techno park, where the research park, where the pharma companies can come and set up their uh, labs. And I, I am extremely happy to share with you is that there's a, a pharma company called Loris Lab. Uh, is one of the large biologics company that they have set up, uh, uh, they have agreed to uh, set up a huge facility, GMP facility, that is a, what they call as um, a good manufacturing practice, you know, lab for developing um, gene delivery uh, vectors, you know. Uh, this is something, an IPR that is developed in house by one of the faculty members from biological sciences and bioengineering. So this is a platform, um, a kind of a virus, which is otherwise doesn't do anything to us, all of us have, but you can use that as a vehicle to transfer any gene to anyone who's born with a defective copy of the gene. So it's a it's therapy, you know. It's extremely expensive uh, abroad, but with this technology that is developed in house, this company, we have licensed to them, they're setting up a huge facility here, and we expect uh, that that would be of uh, significant, you know, uh, impact it would have in the society because we are bringing down the cost of the treatment and because of the indigenous technology that we developed. So we also have uh, 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 another collaboration with the UP government with uh, a cancer, um, Kanshiram, you know, it's a cancer research center, a clinical center, which, which takes care of cancer treatment in Lucknow. And what we have done is uh, we have tied up with uh, a company called Karkinos Healthcare Private Limited. This is funded by both Reliance and Tata's and uh, their main focus is diagnosis. They are setting up machines for genomic and proteomic screen. So it's a diagnostic model, but then it generates a lot of data. So the idea is that the entire state where uh, anyone who is diagnosed with cancer, the diagnosis will be done at this center and the data will be used by our faculty members to identify the, the signatures that can predict, you know, uh, whether someone would develop cancer, a particular type of cancer in future. Uh, so that's, that's the idea, right? So that they do diagnosis, but we will use that data to come up with certain uh, uh, markers that would be of predictive in nature. <clears throat> so we launched a new school. This is Cortex School of Sustainability, uh, which is uh, called Cortex because of the funding that we have received from Cortex Mahindra Group. The bank, uh, they have uh, funded 120 crores for this initiative. So it has several verticals, as you can see here. So it brings in again faculty from diverse areas uh, to look at one issue that is sustainability. How you can make the living? When you say living, it encompasses everything. You know, sustainable. So that's that's the uh, school uh, that was launched on 4th of November. You can see the. The minister, Minister of Education, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, launched this school in the presence of uh, many dignitaries, including uh, people from the Kotak Mahendra group. So we have uh, other centers we are, uh, uh, where alumni really helped us to you know, seed such initiatives. One is the Shivani Center for the Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and Other Languages. This is a center that uh, you know, sort of initiated by uh, uh, Mr. Mickey Pant, one of our distinguished alumnus. And, and, and this really looks at, you know, how we can really provide a soft landing for students who enter, you know, our undergraduate, postgraduate program where they have difficulty or challenges with English, how we can really help. In fact, we have started, you know, translating many of the uh, science, engineering, technology books into, you know, languages that would also help them. And besides, there are many other, uh, you know, activities, including literature and others, which, which also would engage the students. Therefore, can, they can increase their creativity, right? And we have a Chandrakanta Kasman Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solution. This is, again, 
a brainchild of uh, Mr. Sudhakar Kasavan. In fact, he also played a significant role in setting up this Kotak School of Sustainability. And he has been one of the great mentors for us in, in this domain. And this is one such center where there is a, you know, there's a is sort of a think tank for, that's the, that's the aim. In five years from now, this center should become a think tank for the country in, in, in energy policy and climate solutions. So we have many other academic and R&D infrastructure which were established with the help from the alumni through their donations. One is the Ranjit Singh Roji Siksha Kendra, uh, you know, a generous support from late uh, Dr. Ranjit Singh, which uh, really looks at, you know, empowering the rural women uh, to have uh, their, uh, you know, uh, help them. Therefore, they can earn uh, without leaving the rural setting and, you know, uh, uh, that. You know, if you have time, you may want to go and look at the center as to what are the things that we do. Besides, we also help in rural education through this center. Many of our faculty members are associated with in many different ways. So we have Jeet Pidra Unit for Reparation. This is a chemical engineering, again, funded by Mr. Jagjit Singh Bindra. Uh, Bindra. And then we have this J. Pulur Non-Invasive Brain Simulation Lab, uh, you know, funded by the J. Pulur family, uh, uh, Mr. J. Pulur, uh, you know, who did a master's from computer science, uh, you know, he passed away. So his, his family really uh, pledged a significant amount to set up this uh, facility. Also, uh, the reading room in the PK Kelkar library is completely refurbished. It gives a better ambience for the students to um, sit and study there. Yeah. So I'll touch upon quickly the international relations and uh, in terms of our academic programs. Uh, we have, you know, different programs, some are for student internships, some are joint research centers, some are, you know, semester exchange, some are joint degree programs, you know, both universities offer the same degree, but, you know, branded by both of them. So there are 14 joint degree programs with universities overseas. Some of them include the uh, National Chio Tung University in uh, Taiwan. Uh, this is mainly in electrical engineering, computer science, and biomedical engineering. And we have one from New York University, Tandon School, again, computer science and electrical engineering. And Lartrobe, we have an academy. Uh, in fact, this is the one that we have a largest number of students who do a joint degree. Yeah, it's about 60 plus uh, right now. And have, we have it with Melbourne as well, so Perth. So there are multiple universities through which we offer joint degree programs. Uh, we started with PhDs. Now we have even approved a program for masters, MTech, as well as the MBA. So we are going to start with at least two U.S. universities for the MBA as well. And then we have uh, what you call a joint supervision program, wherein degree is given by IIT Kanpur, but then we have supervisor one from IIT Kanpur, the other one from Partner Institute, which includes, for example, Riken. We have signed an MOU for. Um, the UCSC and so on. So there are many such, uh, you know, initiatives. <clears throat> These are some of the examples. For example, Rice University. Again, we have an ongoing collaboration in terms of, you know, joint supervision. So we have a Rice IITK Collaborative Center. There are many projects that are funded through this particular center. Infrastructure. So that's, uh, you know, many who have visited the campus after a gap of five, ten years, you would have seen that a large number of buildings have come in. It's because you know the faculty, students, and and you know staff number increase. Obviously, uh, it is because of the new initiatives that we have taken. Uh, there are many uh, buildings that have come. It includes Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. This is the largest building, and and then you have Engineering Science Building, and we have Engineering. There are many buildings that that are shown. These are all functional. And there are apartments for the faculty. You can see the type three apartment, 112, and then Mehta Family Center I've shown here, all of residence 14. Research complex, this is for a large center to be housed, which should be ready in, in a month or two. Techno park is almost ready. We should be ready in, you know, we should be moving in uh, next year and so on. So these are some of the uh, other projects that where we are increasing the capacity because of the uh, increase in the number of students. So uh, I'm sure many of you would have noticed a significant uh, 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 improvement in the alumni engagement that is that is made possible because of a new Section 8 company that we have uh, set up. This is called IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. 
now which has uh, mr kapil kaul as the ceo and of course we have board of directors from from within the uh, institute some of them are our alumni like mr uh, bvr mohan reddy rajiv ranjan and rajiv sarup they are really playing a significant role in shaping um, this particular foundation this uh, section 8 company which has changed the way we engage with uh, the alumni both in terms of um, informing the alumni as to what the institute is doing and also how um, the alumni could contribute you know that is something that we made a huge difference so as a result our uh, donations that the, the receipts in the institute have increased you can see in the past 5 years uh, you know we have received close to 180 crores plus in uh, 22 23 and and you know what amount realized is shown on the right side so these are the breakups alumni non alumni csr and so on so that's uh, you know for the current financial year so that clearly shows that you know we are able to uh, pitch your ideas that are appreciated and funded and supported by various uh, donors including you know a significant amount from the alumni community so these are some of the major individual donors we are extremely thankful to them um, right from mr rakesh kangwal to ashish karandikar you know in many different ways whether it's a center whether it's a school um, or is it some initiative or chair professorship or scholarship for the students there are a variety of ways through which the alumni really contribute we are very very thankful to them in terms of alumni reunions this is something that we have started uh, after the covid pandemic you know we really reached out to you know uh, to have uh, alumni back on campus these are some of the you know reunions that are shown here from class of 2020 to you know uh, many other that that you can see and each of the alumni during their you know reunions have really pledged many different initiatives as are shown here it is infrastructure or batch fund you know uh, it's really really uh, you know great that they could come up with uh, this kind of initiative which would really make a huge difference you know the recent one being maker space and so on these are some of the um, alumni engagement not only hosting alumni here but we also whenever we visit abroad uh, we make it a point that we do meet uh, the alumni in that city or in this country and you know some of you have met in australia or us that's you know there's something that the outreach activity that that we are very very happy to do and inform all of you as to what is the development in the institute right so these are uh, reunions this year uh, so far 40th reunion um, 10th 30th and so on you can see that you know there are many that are there and we were very very happy to have our alumni back on campus and understand and uh, learn from them i will end uh, this particular discussion with uh, one major project that we have taken up is the gangwal school of medical sciences uh, this is a, a greenfield project that we started about 3 4 years back uh, the idea is to have a medical school wherein you know we could have the the clinical engineering science faculty work together to address some of the health related problems and use engineering technology as a tool to address some of these major issues that could be very relevant to the state or the country or you know globally that's that's the idea so as part of it we are setting up a multi speciality or super speciality hospital currently eight different uh, disciplines clinical disciplines have been identified and there are many thematic centers of excellence that are shown on the the middle you can see the telemedicine robotics ai in healthcare cardiovascular cancer research and so on so we have close to about 80 faculty members across the department who are uh, you know uh, formally associated with the school and working in a mission mode project for each one of the coes i'll show a couple of examples as to what we are doing this hospital already you know we have awarded the tender and uh, you should have this Uh, academic block and the hospital ready by end of uh, next year uh, that is 2025 and by then we will also hire the clinical faculty so we hope to hire about 60 70 clinical faculty members so that would become a vibrant medical school the idea is not to have another hospital or medical school but to generate uh, or 
you know, to train the next generation um, engineers who are trained in medical science or clinical science. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. So we have a site already identified. This is on the um, Shivali Gate site. We could propose site you can see here. Uh, therefore, the entry exit for the hospital will be from the other side of the campus. They don't need to get through the main um, uh, entrance. And uh, we are extremely uh, fortunate and uh, grateful to all the alumni donors who are supported in many different ways. One, Mr. Rakesh Gangwal, who pledged, uh, pledged significant amount for this school. And that's why the school is named after him, Gangwal School of Medical Science. We have founders, uh, four of them, Muktesh Pant, Dev Janaja, Hemant Jalan, and Anil Bansal, who played a major role not only in giving the funding, but being great mentors in, 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 in shaping the vision and mandate of the school. And we have co-founders, uh, we have corporate donors like uh, the JK Cement who has really contributed a lot. That's why the Singhania Super Speciality Hospital named after one of our alum who is part of the JK family. So this, uh, I will just touch upon one such project. You know, each of the center of excellence has taken up a major initiative in terms of how we can make a difference in healthcare. And this is uh, one such project that has come from the COE for cardiovascular Research, this is to make what you call as a um, artificial heart or left ventricular assist device. Uh, this is mainly a device that can be put into the heart. Therefore, people with, uh, you know, having a heart failure, now they can live on for another 20, 30, 40 years, right? So this is, you know, you do have such devices, but that they are extremely expensive, close to 1.5 crores and add up to your hospitalization and others, it is prohibitive. And there are many, many, you know, children who are, you know, 12, 13, 15, 20 years, they die because they don't have that kind of a, you know, support to have uh, this kind of surgery that they can undergo. So this is a challenge that was sort of thrown to us by our one of our mentors who are really helping us with the medical school, Dr. Devi Shetty, who is a, is a member of the, you know, advisory board and also he's a, our distinguished uh, faculty and part of the COE for cardiovascular research and is actively involved in this project. And you can see he has written even a, you know, a newspaper article, Desi Dil Global Lifesaver, about how this project is shaping up. And I'm extremely happy to say that, uh, you, know, you know, what you're seeing on the slide is something that completely done in ours, right from the design to fabrications to selecting you know what materials to be put in for the uh, you know the the artificial heart so we have a prototype that is working exceedingly well and this prototype you know we are going to start the animal trials in in a few months from now and if the animal trials succeed then one we would go into the clinical uh, trials which we think that one one and a half years from now we should be reaching there and if you could make it um, the our idea is that you make it affordable. Our target is to bring it to 15 lakhs or less. That's that's the whole idea. And we are extremely confident that we'll be able to do because the prototype that we have is amazingly good. You know, everyone who has reviewed, they have given <clears throat> a glorious, you know, report about it. So this uh, medical school whole concept is that we are developing using donations that we receive. Uh, as you see that there are founder circle, there are principal donors, the co-founders and then patrons and different ways people could contribute. It could be beyond this in terms of scholarships, chair professorship and so on. We, we would be very, very happy to discuss with um, all of you if you are interested in any such initiative to be you know, supported. And we have uh, already a yeah, block. This is uh, PG Doctors Residence Complex. This is with house. 90, um, you know, this has got a 90 studio apartments for our resident doctors to stay uh, on campus. This has already come up in about two months. It will be completed. This is funded by REC uh, Corporation. And then we have done the Bhumi Pujan, you know, in September. And, you know, the the work has been awarded to LNT. They are working on it. Our PMC, Project Monitoring Company, is uh, TCE. Um, you can see that foundation is already done. Um, it's coming up in a big way. So in, in, in by uh, November 25, 
we should be having the building ready and commissioned. So for some of the research and academic programs, we have been talking to international partners. One is our University of Melbourne. Um, so we have signed an MOU with them. Uh, the idea is that in, in, in India, you know, most or all medical colleges are standalone medical college where they train the doctors for health service. You know, they, there's little, if any, in innovation, entrepreneurship, or even research. It's, if at all research, that is more in the clinical domain. So therefore, there's no integrative approach that is taken to address the clinical problems. Therefore, our idea one, of course, to come up, you know, bring in clinicians, engineers, scientists together and come up with devices and also to nurture and train next generation medical professionals. Our idea is that, you know, any of our BTEC students, if they spend two more years, three more years, get MD degree, right? You know, that's what we are planning and that's something that we are discussing with the University of Melbourne, what they have is called the pathway program. People could enter into clinical program from science or engineering. Um, our idea is to have that kind of a program. Therefore, you know, those who are trained would have equally uh, well trained in, 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 in clinical science as well as in engineering and science. You know, that allows them to, you know, uh, take a project very different from those that are traditionally trained as a doctors, you know, that's, that's the idea. Uh, we are working towards it. So these are uh, some of the goals uh, for 2025, which is not far away. Uh, you know, have about 650 uh, faculty and about 10,000 students, um, you know, complete the expansion of academic infrastructure we already taken. Build residential accommodation for enhancing the students' capacity. So we are coming up with two more hostels and uh, 15 and 16, and, and then we have a residential complex for the staff and faculty is coming up. Of course, the Gangwal School uh, would be ready, operational in full sense, in the sense it will have its own uh, campus and faculty, and School of Sustainability should as well have its own building and you know, full-fledged program. And of course, there are many other horizontal growth. Uh, you know, we can think of School of Entrepreneurship, Data Science, and many other futuristic, you know, programs that would make a difference to the society. The challenges, of course, are fund. Uh, you know, the Ministry of Education is no longer support us for infrastructure growth. Uh, what we do is to they provide us a loan, which is called as HEFA, Higher Educational Fund Authority. They give us a loan, so we are. We are expected to repay the loan in 10 years. They take care of the interest. But then uh, this goes from our internal earning, which we um, get from our student fees and IPRs and commercialization and, and of course, the overheads from the research projects and so on. So that's, that's something that you know, we are looking at. What are the other areas by which we'll be able to generate more revenue? Uh, CSR is one, donations is one. So funding is the challenge. And of course, infrastructure uh, for you know the labs, students, and faculty, and these are some of the you know uh, aspects I would you know uh, how alumni could uh, contribute in terms of you know uh, contributions or you know we'd be happy to have you um, in any other role as an you know in engagement with the institute. You could be visiting faculty, adjunct faculty, professor of practice. We do have a number of our you know very distinguished alumni now. Um, as professor of practice or visiting faculty, uh, you know, and then help us even many different ways. Uh, if you could uh, help even in ranking, you know, that is one of the major, uh, you know, weightage for the ranking is the perception about how good the institute is. And, you know, that's, that's something that um, all of you who graduated from the institute know how good are, you know, so that you will be able to rank the institute you know, uh, uh, this is another way by which you'll be able to contribute. So, I mean, these are some that, that are just uh, put on the slide here. Uh, Kapil would be, sorry, uh, Kantesh would probably, uh, you know, uh, present a few more opportunities that we'll be happy to discuss. Thank you very much for all your time and I'll be happy to take uh, any query that you have. <clears throat> yeah, we already have programs. We have a BS program in economics. Hmm. We have economic science. 
we have a department of economic science yeah 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 it's a it's a it's pretty uh, vibrant and uh, doing well exceedingly doing well and and we have masters program we have bs program we have phd program yeah <laughs> It's a department. It's an independent department. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Can you say it again? I couldn't hear you. Blockchain, right? Yeah. Ah. Huh. It is, uh, yeah, so it is, uh, it's part of what they call as uh, technology hub, the Department of Science and Technology funded this program, but that is only, the program is for five years for, and after that it has to be on its own. So we have a large number of industry partners now, so that's how it's taken up, yeah. But we do, basically they look at uh, cyber physical systems for, you know, the cyber security, yeah. Yeah. I saw somewhere relating to public policy. Yeah. Is uh, what exactly that is? Something being done on that? Yes, yes. So we have this uh, uh, Chandra Kanta Center, right? That is for the policy only. But this is more on climate policy, right? You know, that's what it is focused right now. Uh, this is like more like a think tank. You you know you develop white papers which could be of help the government or any you know sector that are involved in that particular domain. But our idea is to make uh, an independent center for you know policy research as well, so that there's no academic program, but this is more like a think tank you know, which which comes up with yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Ganesh, for a very comprehensive kind of a presentation, and uh, we really are grateful to see that the institute has moved on from what we had when we were here to what it is today, and a uh, whole lot of new areas we have. Uh, got into. Uh, there were some areas which, when we were there, we thought we were the best in the world, in the, mm -hmm. at least in the country. And uh, from there on, a uh, lot of things we thought we could build on that. Uh, the new areas that we got into of biomedical and so on, I think is uh, a great initiative. But uh, you mentioned that you expect our engineering graduates to uh, get uh, uh, extra inputs and and become practitioners. Uh, there, given the kind of regulatory framework that we have with the, the Indian Medical Council earlier and the National Medical Council now, I suppose, I'm sure the Institute is looking at it, how to make that happen. That would mean a long uh, yeah. uh, That's years you can't, of work uh, by engineering yeah, sure. graduates to become practitioners. So that would be a challenge, which I suppose. Yeah, uh, just to address your, like the current structure doesn't allow. That's why we, you know, uh, see, uh, for any degree in science, humanities, and engineering, uh, we don't need anyone's approval so we can offer programs, but that our IIT Act doesn't allow medical you know, sciences, and that's why we have to have their permission, but right now they are not ready for any of this. But this is, as you know, this is common in the US, common in Australia, so we are trying to reach out uh, that kind of uh, university to begin with. Once it's successful, you know, it's a joint program. We offer the BS or BTEC and they offer the MD program. And, and you know, if they are successful, then we can tell the Indian government as well that this, this is the way ahead, you know. So uh, all, all the medical graduates necessarily have to have the IMC kind of a Yeah, that is if you, want to, if you want to come and practice here, right? If, if you settle there in US or... Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, coming to the larger picture mm -hmm. of funding, mm -hmm. where you mentioned that the, the capital grants have been going down. Uh, but uh, my experience in the government has been that uh, 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 there are a whole of, host of areas where people are looking for, for institutions of excellence like, like yeah. ours to come forward and use that. For example, the uh, the one on cybersecurity center that you said, having set it up here, there are enough clients in the government who are looking forward to yeah, yeah. make use of those services. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. I happen to be in the yes. shipping side and we had we yes. grateful for the kind right, of right, help that yeah, you got here. Yeah. Similarly, there are a whole lot of other areas, specialized kind of uh, sectors, where there is a need mm -hmm. where Institutions like this come forward and set up a center. 
the challenge would be the kind of resources the institute itself has in terms yes. of faculty yeah. and the kind of time they can spare. If you can incentivize, incentivize the faculty in some manner so that they go that extra bit to uh, tap these resources, yeah. I'm sure we would be able to get over the issue of funding in more ways than one. Absolutely. And uh, the question is to have the faculty also incentivized in addition to the regular thing that we have, if able to bring that in, maybe we could have many more such centers of excellence uh, mushrooming. We tried doing a few here, there, some places one succeeded, right. but I'm sure if the faculty gets interested and you have uh, champions for a particular specialization, we could have many of such centers mushrooming. Yeah, absolutely, you're spot on. You know, um, In any academic institute and more so at IIT Kanpur, nothing could be top down, it's always bottom up, right? So when you have any center, we go with the strength that we have, the interest that the faculty have shown in coming together and having such kind of a thematic center. So every center that I have shown have a group of faculty and champions who really want to contribute that. You know, there's a DRDO center, you know, Kantesh is here, whether it is cybersecurity with money in then Sandeep, whether it's the nanoscience, Hashtosh and others, you know, all these, you know, have come up like that. Even in fact, the School of Sustainability have come up Again, because about 60 odd faculty from diverse department, you know, contributing to that domain. Because again, there's some multidisciplinary areas. And again, it's an area where there are a lot of opportunities for funding. So I do, you know, if I have a, have a faculty, I'm looking for uh, infrastructure and funding for my research, I have to realign a bit to see what are the areas for which the funding is available. And that's something that that's happening in the Institute. Uh, it's not completely an academic research, which may not uh, have any relevance today, that has changed. It's more of industry relevant or future ready, you know, research that that's the that's focus right now, because we also have to see where would the student go after their master's or PhD degree. You know, we have to be trained for that domain. Um, their job openings are available, right? So it's not only for academic research. So, you know, there's certainly there is a change. Uh, yeah, we do have. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, can I go, uh, Rakesh? So um, uh, this is Amit Banerjee, Professor. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful se session. And it's so nice to see the progress that we have made, the infrastructure, the development that has happened, the amount of fundraise that, that has happened over the years. Uh, uh, but And it looks so nice, so rosy here uh, in this presentation. Uh, but I would just like to highlight, uh, I mean, yesterday we did walk into, uh, you know, the places where we stayed, mm -hmm. our hostels, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And the upkeep of the hostel and the condition was uh, really very disappointing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not expecting an answer. I would uh, just give it as a feedback. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is all there to to be seen. So if something can be done, if there is so much infrastructure, so much development, so much new buildings are coming up, some attention there can also be given. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah. And one thing specifically, which I would like to say, in Hall Three at least, we saw three people being uh, expected to stay in one room, which is a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Thank you. There is a. Uh, I agree with you that there is a challenge in the maintenance activity of the hostel for two reasons. One, uh, you know, ever since the COVID came, so our, see, normally the maintenance of hostels is done during summers when people vacate, you know, so that's where we can really work on. But then, you know, this is the first academic year where we are able to bring the, in the first year and the rest of them together, you know, so that's one of the reasons. And, when after the COVID, it becomes exceedingly challenging for us to house them. And the session also was not in sync, you know. So therefore, it was a challenge for us to do all these things because the first thing is to have them and have the program completed, you know. So this is something that we are aware we'll be taking up in phases, yeah. Yeah, Professor, thank you for the very comprehensive presentation. Now, uh, you know, often we have been hearing that uh, one of the major challenge to attract good faculty mm -hmm. to the institution has been the absence of a good ecosystem, urban ecosystem around IIT. And Kanpur doesn't offer that kind of ecosystem, unfortunately. Now, it is both ways, actually. In many parts of the world, the institutions themselves have driven 
go townships around the institutions, for example, Cambridge or, uh, you know, the University of California, Berkeley. There are many, many major universities around the world which have, uh, by their own work, they have developed great townships around and good infrastructure for the faculty. So often it is said that uh, those faculty who come here, they would, they sometimes, many times they would, they would leave for want of suitable job for their spouse or adequate entertainment facilities for their children or you know, all those kind of things. Now, is something being done on this direction because unless you have that, you would continue to have problem of engaging world-class faculty here then attracting faculty from all over the world. So that is one. Yeah, sure. Um, and I mean, have you, uh, I mean, is something being done with government of India and with government of UP to create a township around IIT and uh, try to address this kind of a challenge? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, see, we, uh, the campus cannot be changed. Here, here is the institute, yeah. right? Uh, there are two things that are happening, you know, in terms of um, faculty hire. As you said, there may be uh, faculty who are looking for metros to settle, because metros offers many other uh, facilities that Kanpur probably doesn't offer as of now. But what the campus offer is something that is attractive to some of the faculty members. That's why our acceptance rate is still 60%, which is no different than Delhi or Bombay. I can tell you that much, right? So the 30% the who don't accept here, either go to one of these top institutes or settle abroad, this is what it is. So the campus, uh, you know, the, the amenities and the living condition is, is something that other IITs cannot offer. I mean, those who have visited other campus, you know that, that that's, that's something we can s still sell and show that you're going to have a good living condition. And, and uh, at least in the last four or five years, you can see that there are a lot of improvement in, in the state of Uttar Pradesh and, and, and so also in Kanpur. Now you have a fantastic road connectivity. You know, if you go to the other gate, which is uh, near the airstrip, from there to Noida, you have complete highway, which is toll road, which you can in, drive in five hours, right? That's, you know, something that we couldn't think of uh, four years back, five years back, right? That's a significant improvement in terms of connectivity. So there's a airport now we have more functional than what it was. And we hope that that would have the night landing facility will have more, you know, flights direct connections, which is one of the major problems here, right? You know, because the connectivity is an issue. The third is uh, the city, what it could offer, right? Um, that we have to wait. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, uh, uh, consulting and advices to even Kanpur city in terms of the, you know, smart city and so on, even traffic management, many of our faculty are involved at the state level. But it's going to change, you know, if you go drive on the other side towards Mandana, you would find a large number of apartments coming up. You know, there's one Ratan planet, you know, it's, it's a huge, uh, likewise, there are many coming up. So this is slowly changing, you know, I, and, and one aspect that you touched upon, for example, people often feel uh, if they have uh, aged parents, whether you have a medical facility, you know, that's a still challenge in Kanpur, we don't have something like a Medanta, Apollo, that kind of a hospital. So that's also being addressed in our medical school. So what you're going to have is a super speciality hospital, right? So that would take care of that. Uh, Actually, my fear thing. was that whatever developments is happening on yeah. the other side, mm. it is quite unplanned. So, I mean, you may end up being in, you know, in a very unplanned kind of a locality, which would further alienate people to come here. I mean, that is the fear. So unless you work out a plan, in the next maybe 20 years or in 15 years, is a plan to have a great township around. This yeah, so the, the, yeah, it is on the other side, sadly. If you go on the Mandana side, it's yeah. developing. Not Nankari. Nankari no, on Mandana can... side only, yeah, I was yeah. talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, there are many, many And projects. the second yeah. question was that, I mean, I, I used to be from electrical engineering department. Mm -hmm. And the electronics and IT, they all remain part of the electrical engineering department only. So that doesn't give an adequate kind of... Uh, recognition and focus mm -hmm. on the electronics and the IT research activities that happen in right, the institution. Right, right, right. So has there been any thinking in the past to have a separate department of electronics engineering or IT engineering or yes. even department of AI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, department of AI, another thing is being planned. It will come up there along with the data science. And there is one on um, uh, a, 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 a 
a new offshoot of electrical engineering is being planned it might come uh, likewise uh, from mechanical in robotics there is a plan that is going to come so there are developments you might uh, get to know in future yeah okay. thank you yeah professor ganesh thank you so much um, for giving a bit uh, more in light since um, we caught up in melbourne and i can see that um, you have a bit more uh, elaborated um, particularly for the right. artificial yeah, yeah. Uh, heart uh, transplant which i did discuss briefly right. in my last meeting right right um, after i caught up with you last time i did discuss with my daughter who is uh, is a cardiologist mm -hmm. in sydney and also you did mention about um, kidney transplant right. which yeah. is my son in law he's a kidney specialist right. in right. a large hospital there and i did uh, mention i think uh, if i may uh, put it this way that you did mention it's a three years of super specialist uh, degree here i discussed with them they say they said that as you know from there coming here for three years who are already practicing in a busy uh, clinic themselves uh, there was a suggestion i mean um, they have done from melbourne uni i think you mm -hmm. have collaborated yeah, yeah. she is um, they are a product of melbourne uni and monash what their suggestion was that um, it's a great idea and i think um, it can market very well a country like australia who which almost leads the world right mm -hmm. in medical field as you know and and that's why the degrees of specialization takes 15 years mm -hmm. as against 6 uh, years or 7 years here mm -hmm. So she said it's a great idea, and um, the idea was that um, she did discuss with some of the professors in the medical school. The idea was put in that if you can somehow collaborate with University of Melbourne or University of Monash, for instance, there are many Nobel Prize winners come from those two universities in medical field. Uh, if the degree is based there so they can attend there while they are practicing and somehow this technical medical school can collaborate with them it's a great market yeah, yeah. which I mean, which you know that uh, in that area so yeah, that's exactly he's the he's the plan you know? yeah so if, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a proud moment for iit kanpur to take such leads in right. this right. medical techno medical yeah. field yeah um which is an amazing uh, journey so my uh, my question or suggestion i don't know if uh, if there is any chance or any plan in your agenda that you are going to collaborate with them for the those doctors as you know australia has got large number of indian yeah yeah um who are trained and educated there doctors and they are very successfully practicing there Uh, so if you can collaborate with them so they don't have to come here it's very hard for them to come here and base here oh, yeah. right, so right. if you can collaborate somehow if that part bridging thing can be sorted out yeah. then i believe that um, and the degree can be a joint degree from here and there and of course they can come here for a few months at right. a time not continuously for three years yeah. then i think it will be a great success story we can see in future and i think iit kanpur will have will have a world name in artificial um sure. yeah. heart yeah. transplant yeah. so thank you yeah. so uh, the joint degree that i mentioned with the university of melbourne is phd uh, that's research programs right but what we are for the medical school we are thinking of is uh, you know 4 plus 3 kind of a program where four years they'll complete here and some of the co this this program is being developed in partnership with university of melbourne then they would go for three more years to complete the degree that would be awarded by university of melbourne so this is kind of program right okay all right so basically what you're saying um, as is they have a three years advanced training as you know yeah. uh, for specialization yeah, yeah so they will be a further three years and that will be based in Melbourne right. Union not, right. here. not here because yeah. last time when i discussed with you um, or professor karindikar he, he actually mentions that they have to come here and it will be based no, here no, 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 no. then it's good. Yeah. Okay. all right thank you so much we have a question here hello good good afternoon sir sorry I, oh yeah sorry yeah, <laughs> yeah. please go ahead yeah my name is sharmila sena my pa, daughter nandini sena she was a student of material science and engineering she passed out la last year okay mm. 
I would like to bring to your kind notice the condition of the hostel. Most of the children there are at the mercy of the staff, hostel staff, mm -hmm. and they sometimes arbitrarily change the rooms without even informing them prior. So I have faced this problem many times mm -hmm. when my daughter was stu uh, studying here. Mm -hmm. So I think there should be some group who makes surprise check in the hostel. Right. And listens to the students separately when the staff is not present there. Because most of the students are scared. Many times I wanted to take action and complain. But the, my daughter was scared. Kini, when you complain, we will face no, that, that, that fear uh -huh. shouldn't be there. I mean, yeah. this is a very student friendly But the condition of, yeah. matlab, mm -hmm. the, most of the children are at the mercy of the hostel staff. They have the monopoly. I have faced this problem personally. Mm -hmm. So I request you to make a group who go for surprise inspection and listen to the children. Sure, yeah. No, I certainly we'll look at it. But normally the hostel room allocation is managed by yeah. the uh, you know, the student themselves, but we'll, I'll review what exactly. Many is. times when she came back mm -hmm. from vacation, her mm -hmm. rooms was changed without even informing them. I, I don't know which period it is because ah. we were in the expansion zone because there are mm -hmm. certain hostels where we have, you know, really increased the number of students. And once the other hostels getting vacated, we moved them to more, you know, a kind of a Nay, but one But they or should two, be yeah. informed before. We'll look into it. Yeah. They have yeah. allotted some room and suddenly it is changed. No, no, they are not permanent jobs. They are all contractual people, yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Professor Ganesh, extremely happy to see that the new center of excellence in departments are coming up in each area, particularly mm -hmm. sustainability. I have been in this area for about last 15 to 20 years. But what I have noticed is, I don't think the outreach to the industry or in the government, I have been in the government dealing with this, this sector, have been to the extent where it is you can attract more funds mm -hmm. and also identify the actually the niche areas right. which requires the uh, research. Sure. Most of the path breaking technologies right now they are coming from China mm -hmm. in the sustainability. Right, area. right. How can the you collaborate more with the other academic institutions also because the research nowadays it's not a right. dimensional single institution research and also industry. And there are organizations of the industries right. in niche areas, for example, in energy storage, there is an organization. So identify the need of them, more local resources can be used, and we can come up with good solutions which are required for the future expansion of the sure. sustainability. Thank you very much. You know, as you know, this is, uh, we launched just a couple of months uh, ago because we had a department for, you know, the, sustainable energy engineering, which were working more on batteries and EVs and so on. But now we have, you know, launched the full crutch school. So as we are, now we are recruiting faculty in different areas that otherwise we don't have. And I would certainly, you know, seek your help in, you know, uh, in, in, in looking at opportunities, as you mentioned. Yeah. So thank you. So thank you. Another question, another, it's not a question, it's a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we went around the hostels and Energy was also there. I do not know whether we have the system of wardens and they are visiting regularly. Mm -hmm. The graffiti, if you see in Hall 1, yeah. I do not know whether you have come across it. It's really repelling. extremely yeah, poor days. The parents cannot, cannot yes, visit Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. So whether that system of warden is working or not, yeah, whether the, how see, is it happening, uh, I'm simply amazed. Yes. See, what had happened here to, you know, the, so this two, two and a half years of, uh, the online education during the pandemic, what had happened was that <clears throat> the tradition that was there in the institute, you know, because of the students, not much of an overlap, that is lost. So we have to really, you know, sort of inculcate all these things. And this is something that you have mentioned. Likewise, even how student uh, voice their opinion. You know, it used to be more civilized talk. And all of a sudden now we have you know, a lot of gatherings together. These are all something new we are trying to put back to what it was, you know, before the pandemic. This is something that we are, you have to sensitize first that this is not something accepted. And of course, there has to be, as you said, 
more vigilant penalty and so on to you know bring in the discipline no, yeah. more than the penalty mm. i do not know for how long whole one has not been visited by the warden yeah. because mm. if anyone visits it mm. he will immediately notice right, it right, right. at least it should be white white service we have it is yeah 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 the group would meet every week in the initial days right right and i i don't know whether it's still it's still there it is still there but that's pretty active yes yes yes, yes it is dominant way of making this making yeah yeah i mean that's that's exactly see what that's, that's you know in as you know in that also there is a senior student who used to be a link right all those you know that's that tradition sort of broken during that period because you know the the batch that graduated and hand you know held the hand of the new batches they were there only for one year or so so it is that so this we have to put in back all these mechanisms yeah, yeah. you also noted it's not so bad in 2 and 3 mm-hmm. whereas in hall 1 was in pretty bad so right, I mean, right. no i'll so i'll th- th- this distinction that uh, tradition has i mean this mm-hmm. logic mm-hmm. should not of how no no i i take your point there's something that we certainly would attend to be mm-hmm. uh, involved in this discussion after all they are living there sure, they sure, pay sure, sure 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 right yeah so, agree fully agree yeah, uh, yeah. one question since i have got the bike here uh, in the previous session we heard about only 60% students getting placed by now mm-hmm. which is almost end of jan whereas in other in, uh, iits it's much better so anything wrong which has gone or why, what why is it that of course it, the slowdown applies to all the all IITs. IITs it's a i wouldn't say it is too big a difference as compared to the other IITs it's more or less similar if it's gone down even other IITs this year yeah yeah it's it's not very different as compared to the others we but we are trying to reach out to you know the other channel by which you know students get placed that is something being activated yeah there are no more question thank you very much for all your inputs and suggestion thank you yeah.